Hello everyone. So uh, it's me, Nishita Agarwal again, um, co-founder of Papa Possum, a pet grooming brand with all natural products for our beloved peaches. With me, I have Sanjeev from Scoopy Scrub. Uh, Scoopy Scrub has, uh, like Sanjeev, I'm, I'm sure he does not require an introduction. He's been in this industry for over 17 plus years, serving the pet industry with all his grooming expertise. Uh, Scoopy Scrub today has over uh, 40 plus outlets with nine in the NCR region. And they are still grow and they are growing they are pioneers in this industry of grooming so when we thought of taking up a topic on uh golden retrievers it could be no one better than uh better than sanjeev to help us understand the coat care requirements for the golden retriever so yeah sanjeev um I would hi, just like to hi everyone over there uh, yeah, yes, so, so just... obviously it's it's great to be here, and uh, uh, now Nishita has been hosting several uh, of the talks, and yes, today we are here with uh, you guys to talk about the retrievers and uh, you know what all they need as far as grooming care is concerned and everything. Yeah, so right there, Nishita, take on. So uh, Sanjeev, while we talk about um, uh, the retrievers, uh, how about you help us? Oh. That's what's his name? That's Mr. Kimutaku. Sorry, Mr. Kimutaku. This is one of the most famous poodles in India. So, yes, uh, my oh, daughter's pet, okay. but then again, <laughs> oh, lovely, yeah. lovely to have you, Mr. on the screen on us with yeah, us on so the that's live show, Mr. Kimutaku. So, in short, Kibu, Kibu, okay. <laughs> Hi, Kibu. I'm sorry that I did not know you, but yeah, you are indeed very famous. <laughs> Right. Lovely to have you with us. He's so quiet. Oh yeah, so yes, he's pretty much uh, you know quite quite used to the spotlight. So it's it's, it's oh, going to be yeah, like that. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, Sanjeev, coming back to our topic. Uh, so uh, just starting it with the golden retrievers as a topic. Uh, please explain us about um, uh, golden retriever as a breed, uh, their origin, the coat type, uh, so that we, uh, the viewers can understand better about it. Okay, so obviously uh, to start with, you know, a lot of times, uh, yes, people who have retrievers know about retrievers, but then again, when we mention about retrievers, we are obviously meaning golden retriever only. But a lot of times in India, uh, you know, people confuse the Labrador element. So yes, mm -hmm. the, they both come from the same family, which everybody is aware of. But those okay. who haven't uh, had, uh, you know, an exposure to this element, yes, uh, a Labrador is also a Labrador retriever in that sense. So uh, both are in the same family, but Labradors don't need that kind of attention, though each breed needs uh, grooming attention at all the time. Uh, yes. So yes, we will be talking about the golden retriever. And uh, yes, the coat condition or otherwise the coat as uh, they have, which can be longer, which can be longish. And uh, at times, a lot of times what happens is, you know, a lot of mixes between the golden retriever and the labrador retriever oh, yes. have happened yes, and yes. it brings about a coat which is not too long so all of them roughly needs about uh need about the you know the kind of maintenance which is generally required and yes right from the start let's take it on when you're supposed to get a puppy home and uh the basic elements what you require so yes uh, you know a set of tools will be required the basic element but then again what is important is brushing every day brush your yeah. head every day every time i mean you mean both of us right here have brushed our hairs and we are all set <laughs> yes, of for, course. for the live session but then again we as humans we do it 10 times around every day and uh, every time we're stepping out of the house or otherwise we want to keep ourselves maintained but why not our pets why do we think yeah. you know it's just, it's just fine uh, and let them be and they're going to be fine short coats or long coats or whatever so that neglect should now be run out and especially in the times we have got more time staying at home surely we should brush up at more than once a day but surely once a day so uh how so what kind of a coat do you would you say that golden retrievers have um uh what what is it called in the technical term and how will you explain it? Like we we know some bit about there's an undercoat, there's a regular coat. 
So yeah, if you could just help us understand that better. Uh, so uh, the court conditions, uh, which we say, is got on uh, the retrievers have normally a coarse coat, which is going to be softer at times. But then again, it's going to be generally coarse and normally falling hair is what we say. Okay. Uh, okay. But then again, uh, retrievers, when we say for show sure conditions are entirely different and maintained differently. Right. But in general, uh, you know, the condition of the coat depends entirely how you're maintaining them. So right. I will always recommend a conditioner uh, to be used for retrievers and also the element that if you're keeping them brushed, there are no knots, there are no mats. Uh, shampoos can vary. The, and, you know, obviously the kind of shampoo you use for a pet all is related with the pet's elements. So we need to right. understand each pet. But basically, largely, you can go ahead with uh, any of uh, the good shampoos, which can be herbal based. Or okay. otherwise, uh, you know, we will have to see a pet and decide and recommend a shampoo otherwise. Right. Right. So when we talk about the general coat of a, uh, of a golden retriever, so from the time a golden retriever is brought home, uh, which month do you suggest that we start uh, the coat care? Of course, the, from the start itself, a coat care is required. But in which month, what kind of a coat care should one take? Uh, so the coat care which is required for each pet, uh, I mean, see, uh, as I said, you know, brushing should start immediately when we get a pet, right from day one. Oh, even as a puppy? But as a puppy, for sure, for sure. Oh, okay. uh, so we should brush our pets every day and, uh, uh, you know, like likewise, uh, one sec, give me one moment. Yeah, I'm sure, so sorry. Sure, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so brushing. As I've repeated and repeated, and I will mm -hmm. go on saying this, you know, it is very essential. But okay. the care there on which is required. So the mm -hmm. bath uh, should uh, start from almost about, you can say, three months of age. We should not okay. give a bath before that. Before that, surely the waterless shampoos that are there. Uh, okay. You know, and I'm I'm sure, you know, uh, you, you know, there is a good brand that we have with uh, Nishita. Uh, you know, it's called... Papa Possum, yes. Papa Possum, I, you know, we use one or two of them. And uh, yes, the waterless shampoos are really what you can use for pets in the starting. Uh, mm -hmm. And all the time through, it could be winters and otherwise also other months. But yes, uh, these I recommend with one, with, uh, one element of a fact wherein you should, because our conditions, you know, the conditions in India, the weather conditions are very, very dusty. So the atmosphere right. carries a lot of dust. So even with the waterless shampoo abroad, I would have said, you know, just spray them or, you know, just uh, put them in and leave them in. But here is where I also recommend that, you know, put uh, the shampoo or spray it in the format as the bottle says, but mm -hmm. then do a towel sponging also and okay. put another round around so that, you know, the hair actually becomes further cleaner. And this goes okay. through for all kinds of waterless shampoo in Indian conditions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, you, you three months on, you can take on regular baths, but then again, before that, uh, for sure, the waterless shampoos. Uh, so we have someone asking which breed is it? What breed is Kibutaku? Oh, Mr. Kibutaku is a toy poodle. Toy poodle. So Navi, yeah, that's a toy poodle. He's yes. a very well-known dog. Uh, so he uh, celebrity that. in himself. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he is. So, yeah. so, yes, so he is one countless, countless shows. Uh, yes. So. Oh. Pretty well known. Wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, moving ahead, Sanjeev, with the uh, coat care. Uh, golden retriever puppies. You say we start up to three months uh, from three months. So uh, golden retriever still what age are they a puppy and when can we start using like there are puppy products and then there are adult products for dogs. Uh, right. Which month should we start? Uh, like, by till what time should the puppy products be used, and when can we switch over to the uh, regular products? Okay, so dogs in several breeds have several elements. When we talk about breed wise, is an, a, a different, into, entirely different. Yeah, issue. in general, but, and then we do yeah. golden retriever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So breed element of calling them puppies will be separate from what the grooming requirements will be. Is what I was trying to get at. So a puppy is a puppy or a dog is considered a puppy till the age of 15 months. 
but that does not mean the element of grooming when we talk about puppy and otherwise is going to be okay. not much uh, you know i mean yes it's going to be much much away from the fact of how the breed comes across so yes uh, three months and beyond is where we can start giving them a bath uh, and look at other elements of uh, haircut styling so for breeds which you are intend to keep and maintain as fantastic looking dogs uh, or pets which are uh, there for you for your looks or otherwise to take in a show there is only setting of hair which is required you do not have to really cut the hair so uh, mm -hmm. that is where the styling comes in a lot of people may think you know retrievers don't have that that kind of coat like you know like this guy has uh, or <laughs> other other hairy beads so how much of a grooming could be required no yes so according to the breed and the quality of the breed uh, sadly i mean i mean that's not the word i want to use for a pet but then again quality of the breed we have to say hey, because you know hey. for me i'm working with stray dogs i'm working with abandoned pets and for me a pet is a pet but then again if just to explain this better so even retrievers can have longer hair not on the head on the side and the body yes. that can be yes. maintained nice and long and show dogs have a beautiful coat condition uh, right. so yes you got to let the i was asking grow. about the uh, about the age when you should uh, be using a puppy product and at which month should you transition to the uh, regular product sure. so till the age of about 5 6 months uh, is okay. where you can use uh, uh, puppy shampoos and mm -hmm. it also can vary you can go on using a puppy shampoo for the whole life so uh, that's not the thing because that's the a game, sensitive yes. shampoo there's not there's not much of a difference like when exactly. we say a puppy shampoo is a tear free shampoo but and that's for extra sensitive skin and uh, the other uh, so you, you have sulfate free shampoos yes we spe we specifically have all our shampoos are sulfate free shampoos so right. but then for puppies we take extra care and we make it even tear free and even our okay. regular shampoo the sulfate free shampoo so you suggest that after a month of say 6 7 months a regular shampoo can be switched on to sure. right so yes. uh, how often should you uh, bath bathe the dog okay so the baths is again you know uh, for a lot of times in international platforms it's, it's you know we've had constant discussions constant evolution is happening on the shampoo front and mm -hmm. the requirement uh, around it so you know in india first i'll bring about a perception which is very wrong uh, especially okay. in our country and many countries but then again the belief that you know a pet should not be bathed in the winters uh, with due respect okay. to some of the vets even say, yeah some of the vets even say ki than ke din mein nahi nahi lao so i don't hear it we we take a bath every day yes we don't shampoo our hair every day so uh, you know the ph balance and uh, the requirement and the oil condition which is there in the skin leads mm -hmm. you to understand that at least uh, you know you can give a bath i will say that you can give a bath every 10 days but nothing less than four times uh, sorry nothing more than four times in a month but surely okay. twice a month is something which is okay. definitely recommended irrespective of the season Okay, two to uh, like twice in a month to max minimum twice to maximum four times. Exactly. Not more than. But nothing more so than I, that because that's where the you know the skin starts getting affected. Uh, but yeah. surely two baths a month, irrespective of the season, are required. So uh, we we had this question from Cheryl Jaiswal. How frequently can we bathe a golden retriever? My pup is eight months old. So you would suggest a minimum two and maximum four uh, for the eight. Minimum month two month and month. maximum four. yeah and uh, okay. you know also uh, share over there uh, what happens is a lot of times people think that you know they can give a bath to their pet every day around no you can't do that again so that's another thing which uh, you know you don't have to keep them that clean because yeah. the oil which is there in the body is yeah. essential for them and for the condition of the coat and skin so yes at packs for at least two okay so uh, we have another question from acharyan So there are two parts to it. Uh, first part says why shouldn't you bathe the puppy before three months? And second is what is the difference between puppy shampoo and adult shampoo? So second part I will um, uh, uh, follow with uh, Sanjeev. But Sanjeev, first yeah. question is for you. Why shouldn't you bathe the puppy before three months? Okay, so uh, the pup should not be given a bath. And what we can do is I've already explained, but I'll extend a line on that. 
uh, is because the puppy in the initial period has been separated from the mother and right. uh, has found a new home or come to a new house. International standards say that, you know, it, it should not be done below three months of age, but, you know, people are getting pets at all kinds of ages in our country. And mm -hmm. also there are a lot of pets which are adopted. So those leaving those apart, we talking about retrievers just now. So yes, right. having separated, we don't want a puppy to fall ill because the immune system is not so strong. And, uh, okay. you know, with a puppy being frisky at times, you know, and, and if at all not done properly, yes, you should, okay. whenever you start your grooming process for your pet, when I say grooming is a bath, is uh, the okay. element what we are discussing, surely take professional attention over there. You don't want the water to get into the ears, to get into the eyes, the genital area to be affected in any manner, not done properly. See how things are done. Understand. Yes, there are YouTube videos, but I won't say that, you know, all of them are the correct thing to follow. So you okay. don't know what to follow and what not to follow. So yes, exactly. definitely. Yeah, definitely go across to a professional groomer for this. But yes, uh, the difference and the point that you were asking was, uh, is yes, the condition for a puppy to get a bath should be surely after three months because their immune systems are not so strong. They can pick up a cold. A cold can get into a viral for other things. So that's why we have to be careful. They are more stronger okay. because by the time of three months, they've got the basic shots at least. Okay, that helps them to even if like there's something affecting their body because of the water and things, it will um, help it. Uh, I hope Jerry, in this answers your question. The second question, second part of your question about the difference between a puppy shampoo and an adult shampoo. So uh, there's not like a very vast difference between them, but just that a puppy shampoo is uh, made with uh, uh, super sensitive ingredients in it. So like we call it, uh, uh, it's a tear-free shampoo for a reason that, uh, uh, so like the puppy shampoo can be used to clear the tear stains as well. And uh, it is not that uh, the adult shampoo will uh, cause um, infection in the eyes, but just that uh, like you have, how you have a Johnson's baby shampoo and then you have a regular shampoo. The puppy shampoo is made with special attention that the ingredients in it are super mild. Uh, it is completely tear free. So yeah, it is just that uh, that is the difference between a puppy. It is super um, sensitive. It is for super sensitive skin. So you can use it for all the adult dogs as well. Uh, but and at this and at the puppy age, uh, we don't know what kind of an allergy a puppy might have, uh, what kind of a thing a puppy might develop. So that's the reason uh, this is a little different than the other shampoos. Uh, moving, um, I hope Jerry and I was able to answer uh, that. If you have following questions, we can. So isn't a bigger issue? They are dirty. Oh, so Cherian is asking uh, you. Um, Sanjeev, that um, if you shouldn't bathe a puppy for three months, so isn't that a bigger issue if they are dirty because they are not being bathed, uh, given a bath for three months? Right, right, right. So obviously, as we discussed what we should do for yeah. our pets right at the start, I guess Sherian would have missed out on that. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, we'll probably repeat uh, the element. For yeah. sp smaller puppies, what you should definitely do is every once a week, sit down with the pet, do a double sponging, do a dry shampoo, and uh, you know, puppy possum has got a uh, fantastic uh, papa possum. Sorry, has got fantastic. <laughs> no problem. As well. And you can pick up other shampoos as well, which you feel right for pets, which are waterless shampoos. So uh, you know, the waterless shampoos is what you can use in the starting, and you can sponge your pet and make them nice looking as you would want. So you don't have to leave them dirty. So, Jaden, yeah, so uh, he covered that topic when he was start covering the puppy bathing. So he said that uh, you can use a waterless shampoo and double sponge them to keep them clean. But definitely giving a bath is after three months because it's a proper bath with water and everything. But yeah, if there is professional expertise into handling a dog, into bathing a dog, then definitely it can be started a little earlier as well. Sanjeev? Uh, so, uh, what I would recommend in that sense is, yes, though we suggest that, you know, don't take out your pets as much before uh, in the first three months. Uh, but yes, what you could do is, if at all you find... Mm, I think we've lost Sanjeev or maybe there's some issue with the internet connection. We'll get him yeah, back. Please. Right. Yeah, he's back. 
Yeah, sorry. Sanjeev, Something we couldn't so. hear the bit in between because we lost. We could. We lost you. We lost your voice. Ah, uh, Sanjeev, we can't hear you. Okay. Yeah. There is Better some now? network connectivity issue. Ah. <laughs> I'm there. I hope things are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can. Yeah, continue. Yeah. Okay. Please. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, what I was suggesting is that you can take your pet for a dry grooming session to a salon mm -hmm. as well, if you want. Okay. But get a dry grooming done. So yes, okay. what hairy breeds, even retrievers, as we are discussing, do require is a hygiene element. So you know the cleaning of cleaning of the toilet area, the understomach, unpad, nail cutting, ear cleaning. Needs special attention, and uh, uh, there's a way to go about it professionally. So that can be attended to at least once a month. Uh, and when we are at this, why not get a dry grooming session done at a professional right. salon as well? Right. But yes, you can do it at home as well. Okay, so uh, we'll take a few more questions. Uh, we have uh, Digvijay. So yes, definitely we will plan our next session. Uh, subsequent sessions to be on Siberian Huskies as well. Uh, so there is uh, Gusa Olives uh, who says, he, uh, I'm grateful to be a part of Scoopy Scrub franchisee in Rajamundi. Retrievers, hair fall reasons and how to control. So this was some, huh. something I was going to come to. And the following to this is, uh, retrievers have skin problems very often. Uh, okay. How to take care of that? So yeah, we'll cover the first part about shedding. Anyway, we were going to come to the shedding part of the retrievers. So first, we will I will ask, put you in two parts of the question. What is the natural cycle of shedding uh, for retrievers so that if, it, if it's happening in that particular season, it should not be something that to be worried about. And if the shedding is happening in excess, how to handle that? So yeah, yeah. OK, so yes, uh, uh, first of all, yes, as you said and mentioned, Lavanya uh, has uh, taken up our franchisee in Rajbundri, and we are coming up with more branches. But then again, yes, uh, she is going through a certified course at this point of time. And yes, mm -hmm. why not ask all these questions to me one on one, Lavanya? But then again, yes, you are there in the right uh, <coughs> spot at this point of time. The shedding issue, as you have asked, is see, uh, you know, incidentally, the breeds that I'm holding at this point of time, these are non shedding varieties, or they are called the hypoallergenic breeds. Hypoallergenic, so, right. out, yeah. So uh, out of the 550 known breeds, as well as breeds uh, which are the hybrids, which are at least another 60 of them. So if all we talk about uh, around 600 breeds of dogs, only mm -hmm. just about 5% of them are the hypoallergenic lot. So the okay. retriever is a shedding variety, is a right. shedding breed. So though a puppy will change its coat in the starting first five, seven months and get the regular coat, uh once a year normally what we notice is around the monsoon period where there will be a little more shedding as compared to the normal but okay. the basic two issues what we don't attend to in india is one first of all it starts at the at the food that you're giving the shedding okay. is directly related over there so you should not be giving your pets any milk so they are lactose intolerant they're not supposed to be given any milk at all Though oh. uh, 40 years any back, I would have, any, dog? any breed of dog should not be given milk at all. So or, I mean, I will okay. always recommend that, you know, vets should be guiding pet owners on this. But apparently what happens is this is something which is never discussed. So uh, your skin issues, allergies and everything start right there. That's one element. So uh, if at all you stop uh, the milk, what you may think of, oh, what should we do next? Yes, dog foods are there and everything. You don't want to give dog food, though I would always recommend a dog food brand or any brand that you fit. I don't want to promote a brand here, but you can go. That's the right kind of food balance that they should go with, but no milk ever. So you can give curd, milk byproducts such as curd uh, okay. or cottage cheese, paneer. Uh, you okay. can definitely give and they are good. So you can, if you're giving milk, you can stop milk and you can start giving curd. That'll be fine. Obviously, don't get, oh. end up giving any cheese and okay. cream and all those things. But yes, yeah. that will help in reducing the hair fall. Secondly, what I repeated in the what I said in the starting, we have to brush our pets every day. The moment you brush your pet every day, 
you will be able to take away the dead hair. The coat changing element gets addressed and brushing yes. also rejuvenates the skin. So the coat condition, hair condition will become much more better and you will see lesser of the hair in the house. So yes, here is where your de shedding issues are. So okay. these, with these two issues, you are done, you are set and you won't be finding that you know your retriever is shedding too much. One more okay. element, uh, uh, Nishita, I will add to this is the skin allergy. I think you mentioned that as well. Yes. So right. though these these elements are related, if all you're not brushing your pet, they get badly matted. And here is where they'll start picking up dandruff. And as the air is not able to get into the skin, what will happen is they will care, develop skin issues as well. But right. also the skin irritant factor is many a times a lot of people, again, are not educated about the fact not uh, talking about wrong wrong about any brand, but I will have to take the brand name is don't use any Dettol or Savlon or any oh, such yeah, element that's a big for moment. your pet. Yeah, it is, it's very good for humans and everything, but for pets, it should not be used because yeah. the skin on the pH level balance, which we need to have in the skin and coat yeah. condition gets badly affected and they can pick up infections in the COVID times. What has happened is a lot of people have been adding the Dettol yes. and the Savlon to the flow cleaning elements. Yes. And here is where you know your pets are on the ground all the time. And then so that if they lick as well. Yeah, so obviously if all the paw gets wet, they'll start licking it. And then yeah. with the same paw, they have to scratch or they have to feel good about whatever they want to do with their paws. So yeah. that's where the infection again starts. The skin irritation will start. And also, as they sit down on the floor, the underbelly touches the ground. Right. So we have to be very careful. Even if you're getting a puppy, what happens at times? Uh, sorry, I'm taking a little longer on this, but the, no that problem. Problem should extend. Uh, so uh, a lot of times when you get a puppy with the piddles and poops around in the house, what one tends to do is increase the, you know, the floor cleaning agent element. And with that, again, the infection starts. So don't right. use any of those things. More than more than what is required, and definitely not any of the Savlon and Dettol. Okay, so here is a very important takeaway that uh, every pet, how every house having a pet needs to use a pet-friendly uh, cleaning flow cleaning solution because it's imperative that uh, dogs do not get uh, exposed to toxic um, products, which is not good for them because they lick their paws are exposed. They don't wear slippers at home. Uh, so yeah, it's important. But Ruhi, uh, she's asking if adult dog retrievers doesn't uh, get very wet, uh, very dirty. How often should should you have a bath? And some school of thoughts you need uh, thought day you need to bathe once a week since say once a month. Yeah. So uh, for that, Ruhi uh, Sanjeev said that uh, minimum twice to maximum four times in a month is what you could be bathing your dog. Uh, that is like a good uh, way to keep your dog clean. Uh, for your uh, point on uh, dogs should not be given milk, uh, Nitika has to say that, but dogs love milk. <laughs> so believe it or not, even cats should not be given milk. So, oh. but you know, they love them. And, you know, we have had these instances of, you know, the cat and the stories about cat and the milk, but even cats should not be given milk. They love it. Uh, you know, uh, all of us uh, may like chocolates, but it's not necessarily that chocolates are good for us. Uh, oh, so it yeah. all depends. So we could like okay. a thing, but you know, the dogs don't know what they what is good for them or not. It's the humans yeah. that you know can take care better care of that element. So a little okay. bit here and there, if all your dog dog loves milk, throw about up there though. You know, here and there is fine, but that should not be the meal. It's not the food that you want to give. Uh, yeah, till the time all that research was not done and things didn't reach in India. Even I used to give my my pet, uh, you know, roti dooth. So roti dooth has been the common factor and still 60-70% of India give, does give roti dooth. That does not right. mean that it's the right thing. That is what develops and has uh, the element of hair, hair loss that we keep on facing, but we don't know why it's happening. Right. So moving onwards, Sanjeev, that... Um... Uh, what are the basic hygiene, like a personal genital hygiene for the dog, for the long hair dog, like a retriever or a paw care? So if you could uh, highlight on these factors as well, uh, how to maintain these things? 
Uh, surely. So, uh, as you mentioned, hygiene something which is called the pet hygiene, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, is something yeah. which I coined almost about 17, 15 years back is where I coined this element of pet hygiene. Uh, obviously, I did, did my courses from abroad and so did my wife. Uh, so, we were the very first certified groomers on this element in India. So, what does happen uh, is that the conditions which we have in India are entirely different from abroad. So, uh, you know, I would not go in detail, but then again, that's what broadly I can say. And depend based on that is where we decided that the pet hygiene element should be added. And we added one or two elements to that, uh, which we hadn't even done over there. So, yes, the hygiene, basically, because our pets uh, are with us all the time. We are there, they are in our laps. And some of them, are, some of us are crazy ardent pet lovers. So could be in our beds, could be all over the place. So hygiene becomes very, very essential. So pet hygiene is something which we coined uh, way back in which obviously, as I mentioned, the genital area, which is obviously the, both the toilet areas, uh, if it all be reduced, the residues deposit, uh, which comes onto the hair by removing the hair itself is uh, done by special blades. So obviously don't try it at home. Uh, it's a special equipment. You should get it done professionally. So that's the reason I mentioned yet visit a professional groomer mm -hmm. obviously you're free to visit scoopy scrub grooming parlors we have 40 of them across india yeah. and abroad but then again any parlor that you can provide for as i'm mentioning so cleaning of the toilet area hair in a particular way in a particular professional manner and right. that takes away the element of the flies and everything because you know especially with yes a lot of times with retrievers majority of the times with german shepherds also in india so a lot of breeds what they what flies in particular season they sit around and if at all that area is not clean, they end up laying eggs, which result in oh. maggots. Okay. So it, that's, that's one of the reasons, you know, obviously you don't, why do we attend to basic areas is so that we turn down the options of pets getting infections. So right. this is one thing which is major. So yes, cleaning of the hair uh, around these areas, very must. Secondly, what we did was clean the underpad. So the underpad, uh, you know, Kimu, you got to show your paw. So the mm -hmm. underpad area. Okay. So you can see there's very, very less hair here. And yeah. we have reduced, uh, we removed the hair again with special blades and special uh, tools. So don't, don't try doing this at home with one of your clippers. You will end up cutting the edges. Yeah. So don't mm -hmm. harm your pet. Yes. There are certain things that you can do at home. Certain things you should go for, uh, for a professional element. Yes. But by cleaning, I mean, one would feel why this should be done. One for puppies, for all puppies, for definitely for retriever puppies, all of them have hair under the pads. Right. So the floor that we have at home is granite, is uh, marble, tile, and the puppy starts slipping. And this can lead to bad condition of uh, uh, legs over a period of time before, because, uh, yeah, you don't want your pets to be slipping and walking. Uh, so cleaning of the underpads will give them firmer grip on the floor and they'll be more confident. Yes, you should have calcium and everything that the wet tells. Uh, but then again, this is one element. But in the long run, when your pet starts going out for a walk, imagine the feeling of having a small pebble in your shoe. And when you're trying to walk, it's the same feeling a hairy pet has. If at all, you don't clean the underpads because with stepping into water, stepping into mud, stepping into the soil, the hair under the pad tumbles up and there'll be a small knot over there that will go on hurting your pet. You will right. not realize why your pet has become aggressive ever at a certain point of time and all those things. Something is bothering him and he can't tell right. you. So yes, right. once a month when you're cleaning the hygiene area, uh, the hygiene elements, all these things are related. And the very same reason, if all you clean their ears, there are no wax formations, there are no uh, chances of them picking up an ear infection. So all are linked and should be done. So your your infection, your cleaning to be done regularly, the paw pad, hair trimming and the uh, genital area being wiped uh, regularly so that there is no deposition in the, these three cares is that we need to be taking for for regularly all the dog breeds, but especially for the uh, dogs with longer hair, we need to be a little more careful about these things is what I would like to sum it up as. 
Uh, so yeah. Prisha has a, another question, which is again following to what we covered some time back. Prisha, uh, how many times should we brush a golden retriever fur in a day? Minimum once is what is essential, and you can start uh, even while the puppy, uh, even when the dog is a small pup. So yeah, <laughs> maximum can go. Sorry. Yeah, I said day one. Yeah, day one, and maximum can be how much ever you can. <laughs> so it is about. <laughs> It is about the dog skin getting the air and uh, the the dead fur coming out of their body regularly. So it is about that. Of course, you can't just go mul uh, brushing uh, a, a lot of times. But I think um, twice, once in the morning, once in the evening is what we could uh, like. It is recommended, Sanjeev. Yeah, surely once in the morning and once in the evening is fine. But then again, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, nobody will go on brushing their pets endlessly, but then again, the more times you brush your pet is in the initial period you bond with your pet also. So yes. it really helps in bonding. Secondly, right. yes, what will happen is, you know, what happens, uh, you know, I mean, when 15, 16 years back when we started, I'm now totally into this in 17 years. Uh, mm -hmm. But when we started, and even now, people who do not uh, access uh, grooming services, one fine day you decide oh he needs a haircut he needs a wash or you get to know about a service which is now available in your city the pet does not know the and all of a sudden you put your pet into an unknown circumstance unknown people and then again you feel oh why is he cribbing why is he you know yelling or he's not comfortable it's all because you know no groomer will ever try to hurt a pet and likewise all in the pet industry we are all pet lovers and here for a reason so yes having that point made with the starting day when you start brushing your pet he will become used to the idea of grooming yes. so it's very essential and thereon you can have services and requirements and needs as you go by and whatever you need your pet is going to be ready for it then but one right. fine day you start doing it it doesn't happen it doesn't work obviously he will put your pet in uncomfortable grounds at least in the initial period though he'll understand after two three visits Right. So I hope Prisha, we an answered your question. Uh, so Cherian has one more question. Why wouldn't dry brushing break the hair of the dog? Dry brushing. In fact, it's the it's the uh, you know it's the reverse. In fact, you know as far as my wife and my children have told me, uh, because I also grew longer hair, and after a certain point of time, they said, you know, why are you brushing your hair when it's wet? You will always break your hair. You know, dry your hair. So I thought, you know, I've heard reverse of it, but brushing of your pet is, you know, choosing the right kind of tool. And that's what I mentioned in the starting also. So I wrote an article on this uh, because when we started grooming, there was no conditioner available in India. I got a company specially to make conditioners for us. We designed it for almost about six months to be able to get a final product. Likewise, in India at that point of time, there were only five or six pet shops in the whole of India. So you must oh. be feeling that, oh, I'm talking about donkey's ages and I'm talking about 70 <laughs> years back. I am only talking about 17 years back. And in That's the whole right. of India, there were only about 15, 20 pet shops. No grooming salons, only one or two of them, which were offering services in Bombay and in Bangalore. And the first one we came across was with the professional one. So it's not too long, but then again, a lot has happened in the pet industry scope and the area, bringing it down to the element also that the brushes that available at that point of time it was only a bristle brush, one side red, one side black. If not, you had pets for all those years, you will know the brush I'm talking about. The wood handle, one side brush, uh, you know, the red one and one side black. I wrote an article. I pushed companies to get those products across to India. Now you have the right kind of tools. So what you need for your retriever is a slicker brush along with a comb. If there right. is a longer hair coat condition, there is, that is where you need the coat, uh, the comb. To check the knots otherwise a slicker brush is what is required you may look at it you when you visit a shop you may feel oh what did Sanjeev say this is very pointed it'll hurt my pet no it will not uh, you know you've seen the sadhu act with a sadhu walking on a bed of nails or sleeping on a bed of nails and then putting all that stuff on himself it doesn't hurt because it's a bed so uh, a one nail could hurt a person but you know the slicker brush with the pointed parts you don't have to press the exactly. brush into your skins, uh, in, into your pet skin. Brush lightly, and it's a fantastic tool. You will find your pet's hair getting fluffy. Yes, it will definitely take away all dead hair, but 
for retrievers for sure it will not break hair i hope so, i have yeah so like last time we had a question uh, we had a session and in that the groomer was suggesting that uh, there are like th there are brushes which uh, sharp edge ends and then there are brushes which has got blunt like a cover on the top of the uh, comb teeth so that is what is suggested for the home use so that people even if they don't uh, they're not so professional they don't hurt the skin so in, in our brushing also look there are combs where you have like the uh, uh, a covering on the tip of the teeth so it's just a way of preventing the uh, hurt right, that right, you right. would giving to the no, so what what you were trying to say nishita is obviously which is what we call the brushes which has got tips on the end so yeah, uh, exactly. yeah so i will i will not i'm not going to be uh, you know i won't differ but then again uh, what i will i'll say what i have my take at this is even for human use also we talk about pet use but uh, the tipped brushes are not meant for show dogs so hmm. uh, slicker brushes is ideally what i will always recommend for a retriever or for any hairy breed dogs but if at all you can go a step further uh, you can go online it's not available in india but there are brushes which are have got open tips so soft pad wood brushes with open tips so that means oh they will not have a tip because the ball at the end actually breaks a hair so you okay. don't want to go with the tipped tipped uh, brushes if at all you want nice hair conditions yes what is easily available for about 3 to about 700 bucks is uh, the slicker brush the soft pad not tipped brushes will be at least about 2500 3000 rupees which are there for professional use so you can always okay. go for them they are fantastic tools uh, maybe cherian what he wanted i'm not i'm guessing what he would want to ask is uh, should you be using any 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 anything should be applied on their coat before brushing uh, so that the oh, brushing becomes uh, so simple? yes uh, so you can so a lot of times what happens is you know uh, the coat can get badly matted also if not not attended to even in those times also and otherwise you can uh, use a serum uh, nishita do you have a product uh, i don't know yeah, we aware. have a silicone free serum for that especially brilliant so yeah. not many companies have the serum again this is something which i import but now i can start using nishita's <laughs> yes, sure, yeah, uh, but yes you can apply a serum uh, also that will soften the hair and the brushing can be made easier but if at all your coat condition is normal and you do not require any softening agent but you want a nice feel to it after you have brushed then again after you know at our salons after grooming all the hairy breeds just so that you know we give a nice feel to it a nice uh, element of uh, you know uh, the, the i'm sure they are, are, are aromatic uh, the serums that you have uh, nishita are they yeah yeah yes so it gives are. a nice sense and a they nice are. feeling yes so you can use it even after grooming so take a drop or two uh, i uh, i'm commenting on the products that we use nishita can add further how to use uh, the product which he yeah. has as a serum so for us it will be a few drops in your hand rub same. your hands off it's like this same. and brush it same and rub it on the same yeah yes. and rub it on the sides of your pet and that will leave them in a nice happy state as well yeah <laughs> that helps them uh, quite a bit so we've got a lot of customers saying uh, this has saved them the the trauma that the pets used to go through while brushing because uh, uh, it is not very often uh, like not a, a, like pet pet parents or not do not always get time to brush their dogs every day but whenever they do the the mats are there so the serum is helping them solve this problem of theirs uh going forward uh, sanjeev i would like to like i will take up your uh, question prisha uh the second question what oils can we apply on our fur babies fur oils um see obviously uh the best oil that you can go ahead i mean because uh, you know i'll take it from the element that we provide massages as well at our salons and you can do it yourself so the best oil for a pet is always going to be the coconut oil yeah mm -hmm. so we always we have aroma uh, therapy baths as well as aroma therapy massages but the base oil is always going to be uh, the coconut oil mm -hmm. you can use uh, some herbal oils as well and mm -hmm. otherwise the coconut oil and the second option you can go with the olive oil so these are the right. oils which are best suited for them 
uh, and aroma when it is termed for human beings is entirely different from the element which is used for pets so don't pick up anything from which is available for humans and start using it on your pets yes oh, that's oil. not never suggested <laughs> and the olive oil yeah never or otherwise or, uh, you can get them across to any of the salons uh, you know a lot of times we get happy complaints nishita that you know uh, the pet has gone back home and is sleeping for hours and hours i said you know oh, what wow. you got a massage you got a massage done <laughs> and he's nice and happy and the tissues are all eased off and he'll sleep for 5 7 hours and uske baad bahut khana khayega so you get ready for that <laughs> so that That's also real. happens uh so yeah so for that i would like to add sanjeev for exactly those reasons we made a very easy to use oil uh for the pet parents where it's a blend of coconut uh, olive flaxseed castor which is good uh for their for and at the same time gives them a very relaxing uh, pairing time so our shino right. fur oil is exactly for the fur right. for bringing their fur coat shine back because sometimes they have a dry fur due to several reasons so a um, right. nice massage with the oil helps them to get of course like you have to continue it and it helps to maintain their nice uh, and shiny fur so we have a lot of happy customers uh you know uh, great, enjoying great, the great, great. you know really i must congratulate you that you know you've uh, come up with these products yes we will of course discuss about it uh so i have one question but before that we will take ravi's question uh, hi my female dog is 8 years old can she be neutered now what will be the repercussions how long for her to reciprocate Uh, you break, you break. Yeah. You break. Yeah. Uh, so Ravi, obviously, this is a question which uh, should ideally be answered by a vet. But uh, then again, my knowledge is pretty decent because I, uh, you know, address a lot of uh, areas and elements as far as pet pet uh, industry is concerned. So you can get your pet neutered at any age, after six or seven months of age. Uh, some vets even do it before. But then again, I would recommend that you know the first cycle, whenever they come on the first cycle, after that you can neuter your pet at any point of time. uh the point is uh why do you want a neuter your pet now she is already 8 you can just let her be but if at all because you know uh she is now getting into the old age or rather the senior living uh segment where you not have the issue as much uh of her, her coming on a heat so uh yes uh, for females it's a very small procedure uh the vet can confirm that to you uh, and the healing uh, recuperation is just about 2 3 days uh so it's it's very very superficial it's nothing much uh but yes consult your vet for the same okay uh so one more thing uh i would like you to share some knowledge on is about shaving so a lot of pet parents feel ki garmi aa gayi hai dogs ko garmi lagti hogi so let's just shave them especially with long coat dogs when you're talking about golden retrievers i have seen golden retrievers being shaved and uh so the previous day i saw him like a tiger who was like you know nice long coat for and the second day i look him and i like he's uh someone i don't even recognize so yeah and then i asked the pet pen why did you shave him like nahi garmi hai garmi lagta hoga dog is like no then you know how do you what do you suggest on that okay i'm sure that you were meaning a lion not a tiger <laughs> but maybe <laughs> yes yeah sorry a lion the closest of the breeds when we have done the grooming because you know we started something for chow chows uh, which is called the lion look so yes. after the after the grooming they look very close to the lion with that you know babbar sher wala look nice. uh, yeah but see uh, i would not use the word shaving because yes that is something which is used uh, commonly what we do is clipping of the hair we take out the hair uh with the with again blades which are uh, internationally sourced and they can give closer cuts but i again would suggest recommend for pets pet owners for all hairy breeds definitely retrievers but for all hairy breeds don't ask for a crew cut don't ask for a close hair cut don't ask for a shaving because all these things again lead towards problems of skin infections sunburns them picking up uh, infections from the floor or otherwise our floor cleaner cleaners resulting in infections to them so yes whenever you want to get a haircut for retrievers it's a single coated dog so you don't have to really worry i mean a german shepherd or lassa app so you will have to worry that it's double coated and it's hot uh, we are in delhi uh, and again we have salons across india right from the hottest and to the yes to co- the coldest of places so dehradun is very you know pleasant 
but still people like to get the short haircut done. So you can go for short haircuts, which you may want to call shaving, but at least leave two mm of hair on the body. Don't go for shorter haircuts because that will affect and bring about skin issues for your pet only. For a uh, so yes, yes. one, one inch hair should be left on the skin. Well, one inch will still leave quite a long coat. I would always, mm -hmm. you know, for me, all hairy breeds are supposed to support their coat. Why right. does it exist? The hair exists only because they are supposed to have that hair. And right. for me as a groomer, I will always want to maintain it. So for me, right. uh, you know, either you don't go for a retriever, you go for a Labrador, which has got short yes. hair coat. But then again, if now you've gone right. for a retriever, then maintain the coat. Let right. it grow. Your pet will look beautiful. I have always believed. I mean, no comparison. And please don't bounce back at me, any of you. Uh, I would like to have my daughters and my wife and all women. I mean, Indian women look so beautiful with longer hair. So no comparisons here at all. But longer hair always looks so good as far as I, my feeling goes. And once we talk about pets on a different side, similarly, if at all a pet which is supposed to be having hair, let it grow. And we style it for me. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, if no one who loves dogs or knows about uh, dog coat care would ever suggest uh, shaving as an option. And uh, one thing important that I would like to um, reiterate is that uh, co the fur is like a covering and like a protective layer for the dogs and it also t c controls the temperature. Uh, temp of the body it does not mean that in summers uh, because they have a lot of fur they will feel hot or uh, and it is good for winters uh, it is not they are dogs are dogs they are not humans so uh, they function differently so it's better to respect it that way rather than thinking of them to be similar like humans uh, so yes yeah um, i second that <laughs> so yeah in a lot of interactions and in are talking to our customers we we get to it. Uh, Prisha asks, can the oils be washed away on the same day or should we keep it for another day and then wash it on the next day? Uh, no, sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, uh, she's asking, uh, can the oil be washed on the, uh, should it be washed on the same uh, day or kept and washed on the second day? Okay, so, you know, uh, a lot of these, and I will always have this human reference to this also. So you can take whatever I'm quoting you, you can check with, uh, uh, you know, relevant authorities, if all you would want and proceed likewise uh, but as far as pets are concerned and pets are the closest thing we have for human uh, to humans as well and that's the reason i'm linking the both of them uh, majority of the medicines that we use for pets is all human medicines that we use for pets so we are mammals they are mammals so even for humans and definitely for pets oil should be if you have an oily condition oily coat condition or otherwise use the oil only for max 45 minutes to an hour, rather, well, I'll put it the other way around. Before the baths, this should be done and probably leave it around for 45 minutes to an hour, max. If not, you're massaging your pet is a different thing. Otherwise, oil should not be left more than that. And you should surely do it the same day, same hour. Yeah. So that's something even we have on our product. Uh, and we suggest the same thing that... Uh, you just apply the oil uh, 45 to 1 hour before bathing. Give a nice massage, let the oil seep in. Take it on your fingertips. Let the fingertips go deep in there for to their skin. Give a nice circular motion massage. And um, then the dog automatically will see he's getting relaxed. And then you can uh, leave them for an hour. Uh, Ch uh, Cheryl is how that, I think that's how you pronounce. And uh, he's asking... Uh, so yeah, it, Cheryl, it's open for your other concerns as well. He is asking that uh, he has a two-year-old baby, Sh Shizu baby, and his hair gets matted very badly, and that's why we can't grow his hair. Um, and that's why they have to keep it short. Any serum that you would uh, suggest, and uh, we are not able to brush him every day. So yes, uh, serum obviously we have discussed and you know uh, Nishita over here has got a beautiful product, you can go for it. Uh, but uh, you know, while we are at this, Cheryl, please tell me the city you are in, I can recommend you one of our salons. Uh, and we can maintain your Shih Tzu's hair much more longer and better. Uh, so it's not only us. Uh, and you know, I'm not into brand promotion here. But then again, yeah, the idea is you get a professional service uh, for this. And you will be Pune, we have two branches. Uh, so I just saw the comment from uh, Cheryl. We have two branches uh, there. Where are you able to, Sanjeev Sanji? Uh, where uh, in Pune is it? 
Okay, so difficult for me to remember all the addresses, but again, one one is uh, in uh, off NIBM Road. Uh, yes. So you can visit them. Smart Pets and Scoopy Scrub Outlet is there. So that's more right. central. The other one is on the highway, uh, Bombay Puna Highway. You can check that out. Uh, they have a beautiful boarding, boarding lodging center also. So any of these locations you can mention, otherwise you can reach out to me directly as well, and I can guide you further. But yes, yeah. uh, maintaining the hair, it all depends, you know, exactly as I mentioned, and good, you're asking very, very relevant questions, uh, Cheryl, over there. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm sure you've been listening, get the right kind of tool, get the right kind of brush. And Pune, the weather is beautiful, so you can, you know, uh, maintain it longer as well. Yeah, so uh, Cheryl, uh, just adding it to, of course, for the professional, as, as we suggested, that uh, you, you can take the groomer, uh, like for the for the regular proper care, you need to take a dog to the groomer. For your regular brushing that we suggest that, uh, Sanjeev has been suggesting that you need to brush your dog daily. You can just take a Papa Bossum serum. It's a silicone-free serum, so you don't even have to worry about the silicone deposits. It's completely safe. Uh, you can just apply a little bit like three four drops as sanjeev said on on the fur and especially if the matting is bad you can apply before uh you take the dog to the salon apply on that matted area so that when they are when they are at the salon it has been absorbed in that matted uh, matted area properly so that the brushing first brushing becomes easier and if you maintain this subsequently the brushing is going to become easier at home and and that's how you can maintain a good but yeah brushing and applying a serum before brushing is important in your case that I understand. So similar thing can be uh, maintained for the golden retriever as well. Uh, so Sanjeev, uh, come with your uh, any special uh, uh, suggestion on the winter care. So in winters, dogs have dry skin and especially in climates like Delhi, um, how to maintain their skin during winters? Okay, so uh, with the basic care taken off, uh, you know, wherein we are brushing our pet's hair every day, what does happen in winters, and especially in colder areas like Delhi, where the, uh, you know, the temperature goes down to almost four degrees, five degrees at times, and colder places, uh, you know, when when one crazy reference uh, was there, you know, in Bombay, when it, the temperature at one or other, one of the years went down to 17 or 18, they went crazy with the pets, you know, they wanted all kinds of coats and everything, because Bombay would not have uh, the coats and things readily available. So yes, uh, we don't have to worry too much about other areas, but what does happen in places where you are getting your pet to wear a coat or a sweater or a t-shirt, we again tend to, uh, you know, forget the element that, you know, oh, abhi t-shirt panawai and the hair will be clean. We don't need to brush. Please get that t-shirt off every day or the coat off every day. That neglect should not happen in these particular timings because again, a lot of times, when you're not brushing your pet's hair and you're not giving a bath ever so often as required, they will again develop skin conditions. So this is one major issue uh, which happens uh, you know, in winters. Yes, what you can add, as uh, we discussed also, is uh, you, know, a, you know, a massage or a hair oil uh, before the bath. So these are the basic elements which uh, can be taken in measure. But yes, brushing is I'll go on repeating for n number of times. Brushing is something mm -hmm. which will always help. There's a thanks from a groomer saying, thank you for telling people to brush. <laughs> so yeah, Cheryl, yeah. the serum, you can buy it online from our website. Uh, it's papapossum.com. You'll get it there. You can buy it from Amazon. Yeah, it's there available uh, on all the online mediums. In Pune, we have it in, in stores, but I think if you want to have it at the ease, um, you can order it online. You can just search for Papa Possum Serum and you'll get it. Uh, Goshal has, in winter season, how frequently I should be giving bath to my GR boy? GR boy, I like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, uh, you know, uh, we have again, you know, yes, we, as we discussed, uh, even in winters, any season, uh, you should be definitely bathing your pets minimum of twice a month. Three times a month is good, at max four times, not more than that. So twice a month is definitely required for them to be kept conditionally, uh, you know, their coat condition and their skin condition good and healthy. Okay, so uh, covering it up uh, in this brushing is, I think, was the 
uh, focus and the core of the discussion today that golden retrievers <laughs> being the center of discussion but any long core dog brushing is uh, is like how you brush your teeth without that you can't start your day it's similar for the pets like you need to brush the dog daily uh, and take proper care of because we are talking about long core dogs uh, after that minimum twice bathing to maximum four times so so that you know if you if you are bathing your dog more than four times it will affect their uh, body oils and it will so they will end up secreting more oils because you're washing off the oils very often and which is not recommended so minimum twice bathing to maximum four times is what sanjeev uh, covered in his uh, topic today uh, apart from that i think one last question that uh, we would have is um, how uh, how many times in a month would you recommend going to a groomer and uh, how often should be taken there to a groomer and what basic care before going to a grooming salon like which you okay. which you as a groomer would say okay itna to logo ko ghar pe karna hi chahiye so that you know your job becomes a little better and <laughs> yeah yeah so yes uh rightfully put over there and you know not uh promoting the element that you know i should sound like you know oh you have to come every time around no uh, what we go on professional telling, care. yeah yeah so what we tell everybody uh is that you know baths you can give at home uh but then again you will have each one of us through our life process have always realized when we go to uh you know a professional salon for ourselves and when we give a shampoo to ourselves at home how different is it you know that you get that feeling so uh, yes a professional approach towards this will be entirely different and required for all kinds of breeds short coated hair coated surely a retriever so once a month is definitely what i recommend because you need to get the hygiene areas attended to and once in 2 3 months very well you want the styling the hair styling and everything but once a month for sure a professional bath and a professional hygiene and the number of times that we have discussed you can get uh, the same done at home uh, obviously i'm talking about the bath element as well you can yes clean the ears with a cotton ball at home you can look into the areas that we have discussed attend to your pet the whole idea you can get an ear cleaner in fact uh, so there are ear cleaners available in pet shops so get that put that on a cotton ball and use you know uh, clean the ears that makes you look inside the ear basically the idea is that you are attending to and look into because You, you will go on petting your pet every time around uh, he comes but then again you will not flip the ear and look inside so nice. by doing by getting that ear cleaner once a week or once in 10 days just do this it just take 5 minutes and uh, you will attend to your pet because majority of times hum ghar se ja rahe hain ghar pe aa rahe hain those are the one minute or two minutes where the pet comes and sees us off and when you have come back home he jumps up and you know you pet him and you say fine yes i'm home but do you really look into the elements which are required so yes make it a cycle wherein you brush your pet look into the ears look under the paws look over the, you know flip your hair through the body see the hair condition all these things will be required to be done and your pet wants it from you so right. if tolly what into these things it'll be a happier thing for you for your pet with lesser infections lesser issues and uh, yeah so you can visit a grooming salon more number of times as well but again surely once a month yes you can definitely check scoopy scrub they have 40 outlets and growing in india and growing abroad as well they are doing a brilliant job with grooming over 17 years so it's uh, sanjeev and their knowledge which is helping a lot of people so please check out their website you can look at where they are take your pets to them or uh, if you are going to any regular groomer please visit them once in a month for the regular trimming the paw pad uh, trimming the nail clipping the ear cleaning all of these needs to be done and yeah i mean this is the basic things you could do at home so that the groomer's job is easier and uh, you know the groomer does not get a dog in a very uh, condition where it is difficult for the groomer to take care of the dog so i think with this uh, sanjeev i would like to uh thank you uh, thank you so much for joining us on our channel and sharing your insights sharing your knowledge with us and helping our viewers and their questions and uh, for all the questions you can reach out to sanjeev on their website of course there is a um, helpline you can reach out and they can help you with your questions 
uh, for us you can go on to our instagram you, know, you can ch chat with us on whatsapp for any of your queries that you might have posed this uh, <laughs> okay let's have one last question which product i can use to clean the pore post wax okay so nishita i am not aware if all you have come out with something over there as well but yes again, we have a pore uh, cream there <laughs> <laughs> uh, completely Beautiful. natural, safe to Where were you all these years? Where were you? Where was Papa Pop <laughs> so, We've come now. Yes. Brilliant, you know. So yes, uh, you have your answer over there. Uh, but again, yes, I will let let this yes. Nishita talk about this more. Uh, but what you can do is yes, the cream is there to ease off uh, the cracks and other things. I'm sure Nishita yes. will be able to tell. But uh, you can simply have. There are lots of products available. But also there are uh, these uh, tissues, wet tissues available for pets. Yeah. So you can get those to clean off, but also while you're using them after that to uh, make sure that the paws are in good, good condition, you can use a butter cream or cream or paw cream and they should yeah. take it on there. Yeah. So uh, here I would like to suggest that after their walk, uh, wipe their paws with a wet towel. So that and and not just the bottom of the paws. If you can help me with um, his paws, and if you can show the in between the paws area, which also needs to be taken care. Yes, exactly. Those parts as well you need to wipe because uh, at times there is mud and dirt um, stuck there. So you just have to clean the paws properly with a wet towel, and after that you can apply the paw cream on the base. Uh, so that uh, the paws will, yes, they will have a tendency to lick it, but it is okay because I mean, at least Papa Possum uh, paw cream is completely safe to lick. It is made with all the uh, food grade ing ingredients, so you can apply the paw cream on the base at the same time. At least for the medium-sized dogs, like a golden retriever, they have cracked edges, so you have to apply on their edges as well, so that if they are soft and they do not develop like bleeding or uh, cracked paws for a long time. So that's and yes, um, once in a month their paw hair trimming is a must so that they don't slip. So that's a basic care of paw that you could take. So I think Sanjeev, uh, with this I would like to take a leave uh, and thank you so much and thank you everyone for joining and being with us and asking your questions. And as I mentioned, you can reach out to Sanjeev on Scoopy Scrub our website and you can chat with us on our Instagram or WhatsApp. You can still. If you're not able to reach through Sanjeev, you can please let us know your questions on our WhatsApp and we will make sure we revert to you after reaching out to Sanjeev. Uh, with this, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, thanks, everybody. I will make a special uh, special mention for Cheryl over there. Cheryl Jaswal has been a beautiful uh, audience here and the right kind yes. of questions. And thank you, Nishita. Uh, wish you were the very best for Papa Possum. And yes, Kibutaku here says a bye to everybody and kudos. <laughs> To dog spot, they'll be doing a beautiful yes. anchoring. Goodbye, Kibura. Good thanks. Thank you for being there with us throughout the session, for being a patient. Right. <laughs> Bye to everybody. So Bye. yes, you can check Thank him out on uh, uh, yes the Instagram page of his. So Kimu is right there, Kimu the Puru. So you can follow him, reach out to him, and yes, he'll be all those that many happy. All the best, Krishita. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank everybody. you, Sanjeev. Bye -bye. Bye.